about. Hello, Jay. And um, yeah, I'm Anna Olson. I'm Assistant Vice Provost at CTRL, and uh, it's my pleasure to welcome um, Bill Leogrand, Associate Vice Provost for Academic Affairs. Um, and I'll be here to assist and then also answer questions about CTRL if we have time at the end. But where is yours? Well, uh, welcome to you both. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry that I that I uh, wasn't able to make it to the uh, the original orientation, but uh, but Anna and I decided that it would make sense to do this even even if we only got a a small audience because we could record it and then we put it up online and other adjuncts could have a chance to look at it at their at their leisure. Um, so I hope your semester is off to a good start. Uh, thanks for coming this evening. Um, I'm a professor of government in the School of Public Affairs, uh, but right now I'm serving as the provost liaison with SEIU Local 500 uh, to oversee implementation of the collective bargaining agreement with the adjunct faculty and generally to manage our relationship with adjunct faculty at the, at the university level. Um, so I want to start by just thanking you for being uh, willing to be a member of our faculty. Um, you, you bring enormous value to the classroom with your professional knowledge and, and expertise. Uh, you may know, if you're familiar, very familiar with, with AU, that we really pride ourselves on integrating scholarship with the practical wisdom that comes from real world experience. Uh, being in Washington, D.C., we'd be foolish if we didn't take advantage of the enormous resources that that uh, for adjunct teaching that we've got right here in, in D.C. And so adjuncts really are the, sort of the critical linchpin in us being able to deliver that kind of integration to, to our students. Um, I want to start out by uh, drawing your attention to a web page that we have for adjunct faculty, and Anna will, will share that momentarily here, um, which just has an enormous amount of information uh, for you. Um, if you look over on the left-hand side, there are a bunch of different links uh, to uh, policies that will be helpful for you, and a number of other uh, a number of other things. Let me just adjust my screen here. There we go. Um, and then on the right hand side, we have links to various kinds of documents that uh, can be helpful. In particular, the collective bargaining agreement itself, which is right there. Um, the list of relevant AU policies is there if you if you need to look up a, a specific particular policy, although you can obviously get to that any number of ways from the university's main website. Uh, I, I especially want to put in a plug for the resources that are available through the Center for Teaching, Research, and Learning for Anna's uh, center. Uh, she uh, and the staff there really do a tremendous job of providing resources for faculty. They run a variety of workshops and training for faculty uh, and are available, you know, on, on, a, for, on a consulting basis too, if you if you have a question about, about instruction. Um, there is also, as I say, a lot of information on the page about uh, the adjunct faculty union in addition to the collective bargaining agreement over on the other side on the Left-hand side of the page, there are some frequently asked questions, sort of a quick summary, if you will, of what's in the collective bargaining agreement. Um, as you may know, about 12 years ago, the adjunct faculty voted to be represented by SEIU Local 500, and we've had a collective bargaining agreement in place since uh, 2013, and we renew that agreement through additional negotiations every two or three years. Um, the principal point of contact for you, if you have uh, questions about the agreement, is probably your uh, your union representatives. Uh, if you have if you have um, issues that are not directly related to the union, then your first point of contact should be your department chair or your program director, uh, the person who hired you and you've been dealing with already. Uh, they're going to be able to solve 90% of any problems that may come up. Uh, if they can't, they may get in touch with me or get in touch with the dean of the relevant school, and, and we'll take it from there. I do encourage everybody to read the collective bargaining agreement. Um, it's 
uh, it lays out important rights and privileges that faculty have. Uh, and as I say, the web page has some FAQs, which are sort of a short course if you don't want to read the whole, you don't want to read the whole agreement. Although the agreement is, it's not too much legalese in it. It's pretty accessible, I think. Um, let me, though, take some time to go over some uh, important points about uh, what's in it, uh, just to give you a basic uh, a basic idea. So most adjuncts, although not all adjuncts, are covered by the agreement. And the explanation of who's covered, who's not, is in Article 1 of the agreement. But I can say, uh, as a sort of summary, if you are teaching on campus for credit and you're not doing it as a graduate student or as a full-time staff member, uh, then you're most likely a member of the bargaining unit. So what that means is that the bargaining unit membership is defined by the position that you hold, not whether you join the union or not. Uh, by law, adjuncts who uh, um, are in the bargaining unit based on whether they fit the definition, position definition in Article 1, are going to be covered by the agreement whether or not you join the union. Uh, and that's up to you. Uh, you can decide you want to join the union. You can decide you don't want to join the union. University doesn't take a position pro or con either way. Um, but we have uh, in this collective bargaining agreement what is called a modified agency shop. So if you are a member of the bargaining unit, as defined in Article 1, then uh, you still you will have to do one of three things. Either join the union and pay dues, decide not to join the union, but then still have to pay what's called a union agency fee, which is compensation to the union for representing you under the collective bargaining agreement, even though you're not a union member. And that's the obligation the union has under the law. They have to represent everyone in the bargaining unit, whether those bargaining unit members decide to join the union or not. And so they charge you a fee for that. Um, or your third option is to um, inform the union that you believe you are exempt from paying any fees because of the nature of your outside employment, uh, because it would create a conflict of interest. So there's a list in the um, bargaining agreement. There is a list of the occupations uh, it's in Article 9, uh, at, which are exempt occupations. So it includes um, government employees, employees of international organizations. If you were employed by a law firm, for example, that uh, dealt with labor relations, uh, particularly on the employer side, uh, then that would be exempt. And there's about a dozen or half a dozen, I guess I'd say, altogether of exempt organizations. Uh, it's important to understand that declaring your status it, in one of these three categories, either join the union, pay the dues, don't join, pay the fee, or claim exemption, uh, that's a condition of employment. And so you really do have to do that. Uh, the There's a, a form online on the uh, union website that you can fill out to declare which of these three options you want to choose. Uh, but you do have to choose one of them. Uh, and I encourage you, if you haven't already done that, to to do that as soon as possible. Uh, Anna, you want to put up the link just so people can see what it looks like to the union website there and uh, maybe put the link in the chat for people as well. So, yeah, just to reiterate, if you if you uh, fail to choose one of those, the union is going to send us a list of people who have neglected to choose one of those uh, one of those three categories. And under the collective bargaining agreement, we would be prohibited from having you back to teach in the future. So please don't neglect to do that if you haven't done it already. Other items in the collective bargaining agreement, there's an article on non-discrimination, which obligates both the university and members of the bargaining unit not to engage in discriminatory practices of any kind. Uh, there's an article, of course, on disciplinary process that generally provides for uh, progressive discipline if adjuncts are engaging in what the university sees as misconduct. Uh, 
uh, unless the misconduct is really extreme, and then the university does have the right to terminate employment. Uh, of course, you have the right to be represented by the union in any meetings with supervisors that that uh, are concerned with potential disciplinary action. Uh, that's a pretty standard provision in labor agreements. Um, I think you know if you've if you've uh, been involved with unions previously, you'll you'll recognize that. There's an article on grievances. So if you believe that AU is not living up to its obligations under the collective bargaining agreement, uh, the union can file a grievance on your behalf. Uh, grievances only apply to specific provisions of the bargaining agreement. In other words, you can't file a grievance because you think that your supervisor is a jerk. Um, none of the supervisors at AU are jerks, of course. Um, but uh, it's important that it is limited in that regard. It's not open-ended, file a grievance about whatever you please. You, you'll have to specify if you decide to file a grievance, and the union will require you to, to say exactly which provision of the collective bargaining agreement is at issue. There is an article that describes the process uh, whereby course assignments are made uh, and expectations for faculty performance. There is an article about how uh, adjunct faculty are evaluated, which is very similar to the way, almost identical, in fact, to the way that full-time faculty are evaluated by teaching evaluations, reviews of syllabi, and so on. Um, and finally, of course, there's an article on compensation that sets uh, minimum rates uh, for different courses and also includes, and this is a, an important point, a professional development fund to support adjuncts who are engaged in research or um, want to engage in some kind of, of training for developing uh, their pedagogy. And there's a link on, as uh, in fact, it's still up there, I think, on, on the share screen, a link to the professional development fund request form and sort of lays out what you need to do to... Um, uh, to submit one of those. The current collective bargaining agreement is a three-year agreement. Uh, it will expire in the fall of 2025. So about a year from now, we'll be sitting down with the union to talk about uh, the renegotiating of that agreement. For the most part, we've had a very collegial relationship with the union. Um, you know, we have our differences, obviously, when we sit down across the bargaining table, but we try to handle them as professionally as as we can. And, uh, you know, as I say, we've got a long history of working with this union and we know the union staff pretty well and things by and large go pretty smoothly. And with that, I'll stop. And, you know, if any questions that either of you have, I'm happy to try to answer them. Thanks, Bill. Uh, that um, was very helpful. Um, I did wonder, um, you mentioned about the fees or the membership. Um, what are the costs involved there? Are they deducted from the paycheck or how does that work? And also, what are the differences between a membership and a fee? I'm not sure right. I'm clear on that since the right. union represents us either way. Right. So the fee for, uh, for most adjuncts is $20 per pay period, which is about $40 per month because it's a biweekly pay period. Okay. That's the dues. The agency fee is $17.75 per pay period. So it's about 90 some odd percent of, of, uh, of the dues. Um, it's a little bit lower for people who may be teaching a one or two credit course and therefore getting paid substantially less. But for your normal three credit credit course, uh, for almost everyone, it, that that's going to be the rates. <clears throat> and and the, the way the way you sign the way you the way you the way you handle it is when you sign up uh, on the union page, they'll ask you if you want to pay them directly or if you want to have it deducted from your paycheck. 99% of people do the check off to have it deducted from their pay. The union then sends us that authorization and HR takes care of it. And what's the difference in union representation for the, uh, I guess it's $2.25 a pay period or something? Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. $2.25 per pay period. They're really, well, I guess the difference is that if you, 
are an agency fee payer and not a member of the union, then you don't get to vote on union internal business. Got it. Okay. Yeah. For, for the from the university's point of view, there's no difference. Got it. Okay. I um and is there a deadline for completing the uh that status form? Um you mentioned to complete it and I frankly wasn't really aware of it until now or you know <laughs> recently. So sure. um I can jump on it, but I also wasn't sure if there's a deadline for that. So about mid semester, the union will send me a list of the people who have not yet declared their status. So think of that as a kind of informal deadline. Okay, and I'll, I'll do it soon then. Thanks. Yeah, the the only question I had that it was the ones that uh, Jay asked about uh, the difference between uh, the union membership versus non union membership. So all good on this end. Okay, very good. You can ask, you know, you could uh, contact the union and, and ask them for more specifics on, um, you know, what the pros and cons are. I'm sure they'd be happy to talk with you about uh, the pros of, of joining up and paying dues as compared to, to being an agency fee payer. Um, this may be sort of a specific question. Sorry uh, to take up time, but uh, I'm a retired government employee. I don't know if that falls as one of the exemptions. It sounded like not, um, but I, and I can obviously look at the agreement, but I just wondered if you had any thoughts on that. No, I'm, I, I don't think it would. I think you have okay. to be actively employed because the idea is that um, your union, paying a union is creating a conflict of interest with your existing employment. That's what I thought. And like I said, I'll take a look at it. Thank you. Yep, sure. Well, if something comes up later uh, that you think, oh, gosh, I wish I'd asked that, um, send me an email. I'm easy to find. Uh, I'm on my email is uh, is both on the Department of Government and the School of Public Affairs. And I suspect it's probably on the provost's website as well. Actually, um, I'm sorry, there was one other thing. Uh, you sure. had mentioned a union contact um, and um, I wasn't sure if that was the same as the department chair that I'm dealing with, or you meant someone on the union side. I assumed it was no, someone. Who, how do I yeah. find the contact for my, my situation? Yeah, so um, the I think probably the best contact for for the on the union staff is probably Tracy Avery. So that's T R A C E Y, if I remember correctly, A V E R Y. She and, handles most of the membership issues over there. And whenever whenever an adjunct comes to me and they're having some problem with membership, she's the person I refer them to. Is is that is does she have contact information on the uh website that Anna had sent around? I'm not I'm sort of looking as we're talking, but I'm not sure. Um I, I would I would imagine uh that there her contact information is probably on the SEIU website. Okay. Okay. If not, I would reach out to you or someone else. Sure. <laughs> Point me in the sure. right direction. I, I just um wasn't sure how to contact them. Great. But Bill, what's her name again? Because I'm on the page. Tracy it... Avery. Okay. You finding it? It, it? Is it possible that she changed her last name? Oh. Because it says it looks like her email address approximates the word Avery. Hold on, go. Is that here? Tracy True. I think that's right. I think actually, I think that's right. I think, uh, I think, she, yeah. This is her. She did change it. Yeah. There. I'd forgotten it. Yeah, that's that's her. Okay, good. So here's her email address. <laughs> oh. And I have Bill's yeah. email address here shortly as well. There you go. And is um is the uh uh tracy's contact is it a v e y or a v e r y what is, is it, it so, what does it say on the website there so i copied and pasted a v e y t oh. okay uh, so there's a missing r who knows why okay. <laughs> no that's why yeah. i figured i'd ask if yeah. um, anyhow. unless there's a typo on their website this should be no I, their, their website is is probably got a is probably more accurate than me 
<clears throat> Great. Thank you. Sure. All right. I'm also open to any questions you might have about anything that has just come up in terms of your teaching, any support you're looking for in terms of CTRLs, um, resources. But you know where to find us. I'll just put that email in here as well. I think a congratulations is in order for you, Anna. The, the announcement uh, as assistant vice, vice provost is that. Oh, <laughs> yes, thank you. you <laughs> I, I that. Went from acting, I guess, to formal uh, um, position. Yeah. So that's great. That's a big difference. I've I've noticed. <laughs> 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 it's exciting. Congratulations. And, and, and she joined the faculty in my department of government yeah. at the same time. Great. Yeah. That's thank you so much. I hope your semesters are going well, and I uh, hope we'll see you at some of our events. And yeah, um, yeah I'm going to go ahead and stop recording unless we think we're going to have any more insights into. I I would just say thanks thanks to you both for being intrepid and coming. Absolutely, out. for being so the twenty five percent who showed it's very up. Very helpful. Very helpful. So thank you. Yeah. You're thank very you very much.